Hi, uh, so I've built this Bluetooth speaker module uh, system from AliExpress. Put a link in the description, and in this video I'll build it, but also for now I'll give it a 4 out of 5. It's pretty good. There are some a couple of quirks to it that I didn't quite like um, for the build, but also for the way that it works as well. But it's pretty good, pretty punchy and uh, does the job. So just a couple of the features that it has. It has 3.5 millimeter audio in if you want that, but it also has a Bluetooth module. The Bluetooth module is controlled by these three buttons at the front. The first one here is the power on and off of the Bluetooth module itself. This is the master on and off, and so that's an off and then it's on. When you turn it on, the Bluetooth module turns on and blinks but you can turn off the Bluetooth module by pressing and holding the power button at the front here. Now that doesn't turn off the uh, 3.5 millimeter audio out the back here. And you can actually, if, if this is a feature that you'd be interested in, you can have audio coming from the 3.5 millimeter as well as the Bluetooth module at the same time coming through the speaker. At the front here we have the master volume control. To the left is power down sorry, volume down, and then to the right is volume up. The Bluetooth module control here, I've already talked about power on and off. On the left here is going to the next track if you tap it. On the right, if you tap it, it's going to the previous track. And then to turn the Bluetooth power, uh, volume up is to press and hold or to press and hold this button to go down in volume. Now that is independent of this volume here. This is the master volume. Now, and that kind of, and the tapping and holding features is, is similar to other Chinese manufacturers. I don't like that type of control. I think it should be inverted where tapping changes the volume and pressing and holding changes the songs but it just seems to be ubiquitous for these types of modules. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of a taster for what the sound is like. And this speaker is really good. It's a 3 watt, I think 4 ohm speaker. And it does a decent job for what it is. In terms of the build itself, um, I'll switch to the build video and you can see uh, any issues that I come up with and how I how I overcome them, but otherwise, yeah, four out of five is pretty. It's pretty good for what it is, um, but it's just a couple of those small things that are a, a pain. This is the bag the speaker comes in. Uh, we'll get it open and then we'll see the bits and pieces and we'll go from there. Cool. Boy, so there's the enclosure. The whole bunch of acrylic. I'm just going to keep that all in one bag because there's a bunch of screws and spaces and stuff. Comes with uh, audio cable. This is a stereo. Comes with a USB cable that terminates with just. I'm guessing this is just the power. So that'll be ground and plus five volts. It comes with a bunch of resistors, LEDs, capacitors, including ceramic and electrolytic, uh, a couple of switches, the speaker itself which says it's a 4 ohm 3 watt speaker, uh, looks like it's in pretty decent shape, uh, comes with some wire, another electrolytic uh, trim pot or a potentiometer really and an audio jack cable and another trim pot uh, I believe. This, I don't, I suspect this isn't going to be the easiest to do. I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner because it comes with a SMD component which will go into this space on the PCB and they can be a bit tricky to solder and so we'll see how we go with that uh, as well as um, this IC which should go in here maybe like that, it might be the other way around, I need to check to see which one's the ground 
Um, it shows the ground on the on the trace, so that's not the craziest part. There's also this component, which I believe is the Bluetooth component itself, and that'll need to be soldered on like that. It has some side bits that I can solder in from the side. There's also that put some vias on here that'll help with any heat dissipation from the uh, Bluetooth chip, but I suspect it shouldn't be too much of an issue. We'll see how we go. Otherwise the kit looks like it's ready to go. It also comes with um, some instructions. A lot of the instructions are in Chinese, but there's also a website you can go to to download stuff some numbers on here that I can recognize. There's also a bigger one that's all in English. And now nah, none of this has like specific instructions as to how to put it in exactly. I might have to, so I might have to go to the website and uh, have a read. Hey, I went to the website that they give and uh, downloaded the instruction set. Again, you can see a lot of a lot of it's in Chinese, however, there's stuff that you can decipher on here quite easily. The And they've done a lot of pictures, which is awesome, so they give advice uh, in terms of putting in resistors first and then doing the um, microchip and then putting in caps and then doing the Bluetooth module that's number four. Number five is doing the electrolytic capacitors and they're not explaining exactly how to put them in but, uh, um, but it's, uh, it's relatively good. It's relatively good. Electrolytics, pot, oh okay cool. So they, they show you how to put in the IC, what, what way to go. So I had it the wrong way. That's fine. LEDs, audio cable, I uh, assume that's the volume, volume pot switch, a toggle switch specifically, buttons or momentary switches, and then the, oh, so the power rails that you can put in as well. And then it tells you how to set up the acrylic as well. So the instructions are actually very good. You just need to find them online. It gives, it gives a, a password on here as well. I'm just going to show you on screen, I mean. Um, so they say USB and then DC, it must be the 5. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, you can hook it straight in. I, guess, I don't know what this is saying, but I assume it's like maybe they cut it off. And then, it, okay, so the 5 volts goes into there. They've got the speaker. Oh, okay, so the speaker attaches onto that output there. And then you have it loose, and then you can put it together like this. And you have your volume and then your buttons. And all good. Cool. No. Nope. So otherwise, the instructions are they're, they're, they're good. They're good. They do they do they do the job. Even though I can't read. I mean, you can use I mean, like Google Lens or something to do your translation if you really need to really need to do it. Cool. I'm gonna get into the build. All right. Um, I plugged it in, and I'm um, I'm not using the Bluetooth for now. Um, I think it. It's working, the, the unit's blinking at the very least. Um, Going to make sure to press this to turn it on, to give it power, otherwise it turns it off. Um, I'm going through an audio cable and giving it some music. Uh, the sound coming out of it's pretty good. Um, I found some royalty free music, so I'll turn it all the way down. I'll, and you'll notice on the side here with these LEDs, you notice that if the music's actually really quiet, the LEDs don't light up, and it's only when you actually turn it up. Now that wasn't all the way up. It can go pretty high, but I don't think it's good. It gets distorted, so it's not really worth doing it. Um, but I'll turn it up again. You can see the see the speaker working.
So you saw there as well, when you're overdriving the speaker, it tells you um, with, just, with just the red LED on there. Um, and it is, it's quite loud. It'll, it'll fill a room. Like this room's quite big that I'm in at the moment. And it, yeah, it'll, yeah, it's, it's more than enough, that's for sure. Um, yeah, so I think this was a decent project like I'd say more intermediate, the uh, hard part was actually assembling this acrylic casing. Something you'll have to, something that I didn't uh, really think about is, because I thought maybe it would work out in the end, is see how these buttons are going through the acrylic. An issue I had is that they were bent downwards. When I sold them in, they were pointing downwards a little bit. Make sure the pointing upwards a little as much as possible or just I don't know you might have to fit the acrylic first it's very this this box is very fiddly putting it together with the screws um, so there's an issue there I just got some some pliers and bent them backwards just to bend them up so that they can actually click and work I don't know if this is by design it's not doing it so much anymore but do you see that this nut in here is actually rubbing against the volume control um, which gives it a, like a haptic feedback kind of thing which is kind of nice but I don't know if that's actually by design um, anything else this is kind of jank this is the USB power that comes in as 5 volts I I guess it kind of it it does grip it, see how it comes out the bottom? That kind of grips it in place so it can't slide out, which is kind of good, but it's very twisty. I think it, it does it does sit level with the table, so I guess that's okay. It's just it just seems a little bit kind of jank. I don't know what there's this trim pot here, and I didn't touch that in terms of turning it or anything, so I don't actually know what that does. Yeah, otherwise otherwise a, uh, otherwise a good project. I'd say intermediate just because it's quite fiddly. Yeah, even with some guidance, this one will be a bit, a bit tricky, I think. Just the fiddliness of it. Uh, this took me about two hours to get done as well. Again, the acrylic box is probably the trick. I found the trickiest part, mostly because the soldering's, soldering's, you know, pretty meh. It's, you, know, you just get it, get that most of that done, apart from that IC that's in there. Overall, yeah, I'd, I'd, considering the, the outcome, I'd probably give this like a 7 out of 10. It's pretty good.